Hey, good people. Welcome to my fragrance of the day video. I'm in central Virginia and we've had a streak of very warm days. Today is not going to be one of those. <laughs> it's going to be probably in the 60s, which on most days would seem like great weather. But after you've been spoiled with a lot of hot days, being in the 60s can probably feel like a blast of cool. So rather than reaching for the spring, summer, beachy kinds of fragrances, I wanted something a little bit deeper, uh, more seductive, more cozy, but not too heavy and cloying. And there's one that I've been wanting to use as my scent of the day for quite a while now. And it is this beauty here, Sarah Jessica Parker's Stash. First of all, let me say that I really had to search for this. I'm in the States and I have heard from some of my friends across the pond that they can get this readily on websites in um, Europe, especially in the UK. I have searched there and been lucky to find some, but then when I go to add to cart and check out, they don't ship over to the US. So that's a bummer. But I did manage to find this bottle on Mercari new in a sealed box um, from someone here in the States and was able to snag this bottle. I um, love the bottle. I'm not sure how I feel about what looks like a piece of tape <laughs> just sort of slapped across the front. So that part is not terribly appealing, but I do like the overall bottle shape and the design up here at the top. I love the color of the uh, fragrance, but let's talk about what's actually in here, which is a fragrance I think uh, is not for the faint of heart, not something that would be a safe, easy blind buy by any means. Um, and so I want to describe it so that you have an understanding of what I think it smells like in case you're interested in this. This is considered a woody aromatic fragrance, and I think that is an appropriate category for it. At the top, you get notes of black pepper, sage, and grapefruit. So I will say this does open uh, a little peppery and uh, aromatic. You get that right off the bat with just a little slight hint of sharpness in the background, but it's a really interesting and peculiar opening, unlike most of my other fragrances. So I have to say, I have to give this one a lot of points for being unique in my category of fragrances. And then in the heart, you get cedar and patchouli. I definitely get that patchouli and I get that woodiness from the cedar. There's a pistachio note in there that I don't pick up and apparently some kind of lily, like a, I think it's a white ginger lily. And in the base, you have this beautiful combination of, and I always say this wrong, I think it's pronounced olibanum, but I would say olibanum, olibanum, which is, I just learned today, I was today years old, I have to admit, I knew it was a resin, I had figured that out a while back, but I was today years old when I learned that uh, it is what makes frankincense oil, which makes good sense. So one of the fun things about doing perfume reviews and being an enthusiast is the world of perfumery is so deep and complex and fun, and there are never ending facts to learn about it. I really enjoy that. Uh, hopefully you do too, and that's why you watch videos, but keep in mind, just to be fair to you as a viewer, especially if you are not on YouTube reviewing yourself, we don't always know everything. We are learning with you and from each other as we review fragrances. So it's important for you as a consumer of this information to treat it both as just pure entertainment uh, and maybe some information because we continue to learn and evolve in our understanding of uh, perfumery as well. So I hope you can appreciate that and we're in this together is what I'm getting at. So in the base, you get that olibanum, you get vetiver and musk and some other uh, woody notes. What I have to say about this fragrance is that Sarah Jessica Parker, so the description goes when she created this, was thinking about a number of male fragrances that she really liked that had incense and leather in them when she created this. She was also thinking about fragrances from church. And I forget one other thing. I think it's from outside, or maybe I'm making that up, <laughs> remembering that, because this fragrance reminds me very much 
of the scent from my husband's skin after he has been outside working for a while. And I don't mean body odor. Oh, that is the other thing. So she was thinking, Sarah Jessica Parker was thinking about church body odor in a good way, I would assume, <laughs> uh, and male colognes that she likes. But I have to say that this is right on. It does remind me of a nice body odor from uh, my husband being outside. You know what I'm talking about? When you come in from spending a number of hours outdoors, your fragrance, your body gives off this, this fragrance. It's like it's coming up out of your pores. Um, and there's nothing else to describe it except the smell of outside. I don't know how else to put that. It's almost like a soft cologne little bit of barber shoppy, little bit of man's deodorant combined all together to get you that smell. It's sweet and salty at the same time. That's what I think of this. This is a very complex fragrance to me. I definitely get this incense -y vibe in the background. I like to think of fragrances as a landscape where there are players in the foreground players off to the side, sort of flanking it, and then there's a background, right? So the, the very background off in the distance in this painting is that churchy, incense-y kind of smell. It's not pronounced, but it's there and it gives a nice complexity to this. In the foreground of this, maybe it is that pistachio that's giving it that sort of body odor thing. And what I mean by that is now that I think about it and I'm talking about it, there's a little bit of a nutty accord in the foreground that is also surrounded on the sides by aromatic players. Okay, so you think about that sage and maybe some other kinds of notes along those lines that are um, herby that give it a lot of complexity. It's like nothing else. I don't have anything else like this in my collection. That's not true. I'm sorry. There is one fragrance that this kind of reminds me of, but not really, and I need to describe what I mean by that. I have a Chloe... Nomad Absolu. Okay, this is one that I'm still playing with. I do like it. I don't love it. I was really hoping to fall in love with this and I didn't. But I, in fairness, I've only worn it once and I'm going to try it again here as we go into the summer months. This stash is everything I was hoping Nomad would be. It has Nomad plus additional complexity, depth, character, personality, oomph. This one can hold its own among all the other perfumes, whereas unfortunately, at least right now, as I've tested it, Nomad um, comes across as very much like shave cream um, that is missing some additional element of personality that I'm really wanting. For those of you that are like in the HR field or if you've ever participated in interviews for your job, like interviewing others, you know how you have that candidate that you like, they have a solid background, their resume looks good, but when you interview them, there is just something you're looking for that doesn't come out in the interviews, like it falls slightly flat, but you know, on paper and in conversation, they're a solid candidate, but there's, you're just missing that thing. That's what I feel about Nomad, whereas this, this is the dark horse candidate that submits the resume that looks a little bit odd, right? The note structure. <laughs> You interview Stash, and it's quite a fascinating person where you're constantly asking questions that are actually off script from your interview because you want to know more, and you find that person interesting and different, and there's something novel about them. I hope that that makes some kind of sense. So no offense to Namad, we're going to keep playing with you, and we will interview you for another job, but you're not getting the job that Stash is getting stash is stash is number one on the candidate list for whatever that job is <laughs> so what i would say is if you're a person who likes adventurous fragrances this isn't a loud fragrance so it's not going to knock people out offend i don't think um if you spray lightly i have sprayed this about 12 times on me because i'm crazy and i'm only working from home and i don't really care um but if you like novel fragrances that have something to say in this world, they stand up for something unique and different, <laughs> Stash may be the choice for you. If you are a male viewer, you may also love this. I could see this playing very, very well on bold women or women that could be shy but have a lot of hidden personality that you just have to explore to get to know. 
that's that stash and it's also for gentlemen i could see this i'd love to smell this on my husband so sarah jessica parker stash and i also have a note for those of you that are faithful viewers if you're interested if you're not and it's about by the way the fragrance rumor 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 i want to call it rumor but it's rumor when I uh, reviewed this a while back, a few weeks ago, I said it reminded me of something and I figured out what that is. So if you want to stay to hear about that, please do. If not, I appreciate you watching this morning to hear about Stash and I hope you have a great day. For the rest of you, I figured out finally last night at about 3 a.m. when I couldn't sleep and got on my phone to make myself sleepy and started, of course, doing what? Looking at fragrance reviews. <laughs> you guys. This is a problem, right? Anyway, rumor, when I tried this a while back, it reminded me so much of like this cold, metallic-ish kind of fragrance in my past that I wore a lot and decided that I didn't want to wear anymore, and I found it. It is Pure Turquoise from Ralph Lauren. Who remembers that bottle? It had a short, squat bottle that looked like a boulder, it was mis a misshapen bottle on purpose because it was supposed to be unique. And then the bottle had like this little turquoise. It was a silver, I'm sorry, the top was this round top with this silver uh, and turquoisey ring on it. Who remembers that? It's that fragrance that this reminds me of. This is like a weaker, paler version of that Ralph Lauren turquoise, which I wore and wore and wore. I had a huge bottle of that um, and had this thing where there were some days that I liked it and other days where I was just irritated to death with it. So I ended up either giving it away or donating it to Goodwill or something. I don't remember what I did with that fragrance, but that is what rumor reminds me of. I'm finally there. So this is another one that I'm gonna keep playing with it because I do appreciate its composition and its uniqueness. Although I don't think this is sort of a top tier. It's not a top shelf. Like with liquor, you have your top shelf liquors that you love and are expensive and smooth and well blended. And then you have that middle tier and then you have, you know, the bottom rack that, you know, well, we'll talk about that another day. <laughs> this is probably in like a middle tier for me. Okay. Thanks so much for hanging out with me and listening to me ramble on about my fragrances. I hope you all have a fantastic day. Take care, friends.